shock accompanies most serious injuries to some degree. A primary cause of shock is uncontrolled serious bleeding, either externally or internally, bleeding problems. Burns and scalds. Serious fractures. And heart attacks. The signs and symptoms of shock are much like those of many other conditions. The pulse is likely to be weak and rapid. Breathing may be shallow and irregular or labored. The casualty is usually pale and sweaty, but the skin may be bluish or reddish. There may be nausea and vomiting. Shock can be serious enough to cause death even though the injury which causes it may not have been fatal. Don't wait for it to develop. Immediate and proper first aid for injuries or conditions which may cause it. Control bleeding. Assist breathing. Or restore breathing. Cover serious wounds and burns. Stabilize fractures. In all cases which may give rise to shock, keep the victim at rest. Loosen tight clothing at the neck and waist. Cover to preserve body heat, but do not overheat. Casualties with injuries to the head, chest, or abdomen may be more comfort supported. Circulation to vital organs may be improved by raising the feet 8 to 12 inches, unless it causes pain or breathing difficulties. This should not be done if there are injuries to the head, chest, or abdomen, or if there are any unsplinted fractures. If the victim loses consciousness or vomits, turn her to the recovery position if her injuries permit this. Keep the air passage clear. Keep her covered and send for medical help. Now your instructor will have you work through a lesson which covers more detail about shock. move this man until you examine him. He may have a broken bone. If he has, he will feel pain and tenderness at the site of the injury. He may have felt or heard the bone snap. There may be deformity. Do not handle him too much, trying to confirm that it is a fracture. When a bone is broken, any movement causes extra pain and can damage surrounding tissues, blood vessels, muscles and nerves. The aim of first aid is to avoid further damage by preventing movement of the broken bones. If you suspect a fracture, treat as a fracture. Steady and support the injured arm with gentle traction. Secure it, even if only in a temporary way, before he is moved. 
Apply a splint from knuckles to elbow to immobilize the bone ends and the wrist. A folded newspaper or magazine will do. If you use a hard splint, pad it to fit the arm to prevent discomfort and chafing of the skin. Secure the splint with bandages above and below the fracture. Avoid tying knots over the site of the fracture. Support the forearm in a sling. This will ease the pain and keep the elbow from moving. Place the point behind the elbow. Carry the ends around the neck, raising the hand above the level of the elbow. Tie at the side of the neck. Fasten securely at the elbow. Leave the fingers exposed so you can check for signs of poor circulation. If the break had been in the upper arm, the side of the chest is a natural splint. Place a soft pad between the upper arm and the chest wall. Fasten the arm against the chest with bandages above and below the fracture. Put the forearm in a sling. Direct or indirect force on a joint may cause a bone end to pop out of its socket. This is known as a dislocation. For instance, a dislocated shoulder may be caused by a blow on the shoulder or a fall on the outstretched arm. When treating any dislocation, do not try to replace bone ends back in a joint. Support the arm in the position which the patient finds most comfortable. Use a sling. Place padding between the arm and the body. Secure the arm to prevent movement. Use broad bandages, not too tight. Now your instructor will have you practice.
when safety rules are broken, expect an accident. Do not move this man until you examine him. If you suspect a fractured leg, steady and support the leg and foot. If you find bleeding, expose the wound. If there is a bone protruding or a wound leading into the bone, it is an open fracture. Cover the wound first to prevent infection. Pass a bandage under the leg. If a bone is protruding, build up a pad around it. Bandage carefully, but firmly enough to control bleeding. Avoid direct pressure on the fracture. When the wound has been dressed, immobilize the fracture before you move the casualty. Pass bandages under the leg, one at the ankle, one above the fracture, and one at the knees. Pad between the legs. Use the good leg as a splint. Move it to the side of the injured leg. Tie a figure of eight bandage at the feet and ankles to prevent rotation. Tie the other bandages snugly, but not too tight. Always tie knots on the uninjured side. Maintain traction until all bandages are in place. Watch to be sure that bleeding is being controlled. Fractures in the upper leg, in the hip or thigh, may not cause deformity at the site of the fracture, but the thigh may swell quickly. In some cases, the leg rolls outward with the foot lying on its outer side. Serious internal bleeding under the skin and shock often accompany fractures of these large bones. First aid must be prompt and correct. Steady and support the injured leg at once. Pull firmly and steadily on the foot. Align the injured leg similar to the good one, toes and kneecap pointed upwards. The person at the foot controls the movement. Slide bandages under the legs. At the thigh. At the knee and below the fracture. At mid-leg. and at the ankle. Place a pad between the legs and move the good leg to the injured one. Tie a figure of eight around the ankles and feet.
Now tie the remaining bandages. Always tie knots on the uninjured side. Do not bandage directly over a fracture. If the journey to medical aid will be long or rough, use a wooden slat or pole well padded as a splint. Use a blanket or wrap it in bandages. Apply it to the outer side of the limb from foot to armpit. Let's review. When in doubt, treat as a fracture. Steady and support the injured part at once to prevent further damage. Treat the fracture on the site of the incident before you move the casualty, unless life is endangered. Immobilize bone ends at the site of the fracture and the joints immediately above and below it. With dislocations, do not attempt to replace the bone ends in the joint. Now your instructor will have you practice. This man can breathe normally because his chest is undamaged. If the chest is damaged, the primary aim of first aid is to assist the patient's breathing. Serious breathing problems can develop quickly if the chest is punctured or crushed. An open chest wound must be sealed immediately to prevent air from being sucked in, compressing the lung. Your bare hand will do until you can get a dressing. Plastic wrap or aluminum foil will make an effective seal. It must extend beyond the edges of the wound. Secure it to make all edges airtight. If you use a cloth dressing, which will allow air to go through, cover it with tape to make it airtight. Turn the casualty to his injured side to allow the good lung more freedom to function. If an object, such as a knife, is in the wound, do not remove it. Keep it steady with a bulky dressing, secured firmly in place.
removal of the object or movement of it could cause more serious internal injury. Severe blows to the chest or a crushing force often fracture a number of ribs in more than one place, loosening part of the chest wall. This condition, referred to as flail chest, is extremely serious. The casualty will have difficulty breathing because his chest will not expand properly. The loose part will not move with the rest of the chest. Drivers often suffer crushed chests in highway accidents. The immediate aim of first aid is to assist breathing by supporting the chest wall. Bind the arm against the injured chest. Use broad bandages over the clothing. A thick pad secured firmly against the loose part will also provide effective support. Patients with chest injuries usually breathe better in a semi-sitting position. Incline the patient toward the injured side. All chest injuries require urgent medical attention. There may be internal bleeding and other direct injury to the lungs or heart. Now your instructor will have you work through a lesson on chest, pelvic, and abdominal injuries.